Hi, welcome to Wednesday's Word with Uncle Tim, and today is the second part of a three-part series that I'm doing on the unintended consequences. Last week, the story was a fictional story about a king and some cheese and the mice and all that, but this week, it is an actual true story that took place, and this story has much more dire, much more serious consequences than the last story. So be sure to stick around to the end to hear what those are and what the lesson is. And with that, let's get started. So today's story is about a man named Daniel. Now Daniel worked for the king, and he'd actually worked for three or four other kings before this. And he had been a very faithful servant to all of these kings. And he was now getting pretty old. He was possibly even up into his 90s when all of this took place. So the king was Darius, and King Darius decided he wanted to set up his government with 120 governors and then three high officials over the whole land. So the 120 governors would report to these three high officials. So it turned out that Daniel was one of these three high officials that the king had set in place. And after a little bit of time, Daniel became well known and renowned above the other three. And so the king had it in mind to set Daniel over the whole kingdom. He was going to make him second in command of the entire kingdom. Now this was because Daniel was such a faithful servant and he was also a very wise man as he sought counsel from the Lord every day and God guided and directed his every step. The other high officials and the governors didn't like this one bit. They were very, very jealous of Daniel and the fact that he was going to be set over the kingdom. So they all started searching for a way to bring a complaint against Daniel. They really scrutinized everything he did, but they were able to find no fault and nothing that they could take to the king to complain against him about. Then they got together and discussed it and decided we're not going to find anything to complain against Daniel about unless it is in connection with the law of his God, because they knew how faithful Daniel was to his God. All these guys got together and they went before the king and then they buttered him up and said, Oh, King Darius, live forever. All the high officials of the kingdom and the governors have agreed that the king should establish an ordinance and enforce an injunction that whoever makes petition to any god or man for 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions and make it so that it cannot be revoked. So the king went ahead and did what they had asked him to do. He signed the law and made it so it could not be revoked. Now Daniel knew that this had been signed into law, but he went to his house and got down on his knees and prayed to God just like he did every day. Now all these men knew that Daniel went to his house to pray three times a day and they knew at what times he did it. And so while he was praying, they came into the room and caught him in the very act. Then these men went running to the king and said, O King Darius, didn't you just sign a law that said if anybody prays to any god except you for 30 days they'll be thrown into the lion's den? And he said, yes, I did. And they said, well, we just caught Daniel. He was in his room praying to God and totally ignoring the law that you just signed. When the king heard this, he was very upset because he loved Daniel. And he spent the rest of the day until the sun went down, struggling within himself, trying to come up with a way to rescue Daniel. At the end of the day, all the men came to him and said, Oh, king, you know that you passed the law and there's no going back on it. You have to follow through. So, sadly, for King Darius, he commanded that Daniel be brought and cast into the den of lions. And just before the king had Daniel put into the lion's den, he said to him, May your God, whom you serve continually, deliver you. And then a stone was brought and rolled in front of the entrance. Then the king went back to his room and he spent the whole night pacing the floor, worrying, fasting. He didn't eat anything and he didn't sleep the whole entire night. Now at the break of dawn, the king ran to the lion's den. And as he approached it, he cried out, O oh, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God been able to save you? Yes, Daniel answered. My God has delivered me because I was found blameless in his eyes and in yours. An angel of the Lord shut the lion's mouths and I am unharmed. And the king was exceedingly happy. And he commanded that Daniel be taken up out of the den immediately. Now many of you have heard this story before, 
But I don't know if everyone knows this part of the story. Once they pulled Daniel up out of the lion's den, the king commanded that all of those men who had maliciously accused him be brought and cast into the den of lions. And not only them, but their children and their wives. And before they reached the bottom of the den, the lions had crushed all of their bones into pieces. And this is where we get to the part about the unintended consequences. All of these men were jealous of Daniel, and so they set out to destroy him. And they thought they had him right where they wanted him when he was placed into the lion's den. But the Lord protected him and turned things around on them. And they ended up being the ones thrown into the lion's den. And not only themselves, but their children and their wives. Now those are some pretty serious unintended consequences. So the next time you're feeling jealous or upset at somebody and you think you're going to stick it to them, you just might want to think again because you may be the one to end up in the lion's den and you just might take others with you that you had no idea would be involved. <laughs>